You're watching Mick and T Sports Report on CHCO TV. And now, here's two guys who would gladly give up all of their personal location data for a free coffee and donut at Tim Hortons, Evan and Joe. I'm Joe Tykotsky down in New Haven, Connecticut. I'm Evan McFarland here in the much needed but very wet and rainy St. Andrews, New Brunswick. And this is Mick and T Sports Report. And as Mark mentioned in the opening, we'd gladly give up all of our personal location data for a free coffee and donut at Tim Hortons. And for those of you that didn't hear, I guess up there they ran into a little trouble in their app where they were gathering people's location data. So the settlement was that everyone potentially will get a free coffee and donut, which seems like it just helps them out even more, but whatever. And um, I'm there every morning anyway, so sure, why not? Go for I'm it. On the house. Well, this is the final episode of our third season. Um, our first year, we did nine episodes. Last year, we did 16, and this year, a record 17. Um, and in the next episode, we'll have some anniversary fun as we start out our fourth season. But for now, we have some late summer stories to go over. And first up, um, Amelia Welch, who used to help us out in the show and has done a number of um, uh, things for CHCO, some high school reports back in the day and bingo and all that. She just got engaged. So we'll pop up a pal, try to figure out how to get myself out of their picture there. <laughs> There is Amelia and her fiance, Josh. So they will be getting married and uh, congrats uh, to Amelia. It's uh, yeah, great news. That's awesome. Yeah, congrats, Amelia. All right. Um, and then next up, um, I was just up there a little while ago in St. Andrews for our camp, which was a great time. Uh, visited some old friends while I was there, but I'd have to say the highlight was the party at your house. Um, <laughs> If you remember from the old office episode, there ain't no party like a Scranton party. Uh, yeah. My, oh, my. I, I thought I was back in college there for, uh, for a few hours there, but that was an awesome time. Yeah, well, no, we appreciate it. If there's one thing that our house can do, it is host uh, parodies. So that was uh, pretty normal for us. <laughs> good food and, uh, and good company. Uh, Absolutely. And also, while I was up in St. Andrews, there was a celebrity golf tournament held to raise funds for the world's oldest basketball court. So we're going to give you the report uh, that CHCO's Vicki Hogarth did on the event. So let's take a look at that now. Sports celebrities from across North America, including high profile NBA and Major League Baseball stars, were in Charlotte County this past weekend for a golf tournament fundraiser benefiting the world's oldest basketball court in St. Stephen. Before hitting the green, celebrities checked out the historic court in the former YMCA on King Street, where Lyman Archibald famously first brought the game to the area in 1893, after apprenticing with the founder of the sport, Canadian James Naismith. When you think about what has transpired on this court, if you're a basketball lover, you can't appreciate it anymore. I mean, this is just an amazing piece of our basketball Canadian history and it's it's something that I love what they're going to do with it I love where the, the ideas are going and I think that it's so vital for our country to understand how important this court is to the development of this game in this country. After taking in sports history in St. Stephen, celebrities set out to make history at the Algonquin Golf Course, joining foursomes for the inaugural golf tournament known as the Archie, fittingly named after Archibald. What a lovely golf course, what an unbelievable piece of property, especially when you get down into the back nine and uh, 11, 12, 13, all those holes where you can see the water. It's just a spectacular golf course and it will not be my last trip here. Tom Liston, who is a member of the nonprofit group Canada First Basketball Inc., which is behind the court's restoration journey, was the key organizer of the golf tournament and played an integral role in the number of big sports names who traveled to Charlotte County for the fundraiser. So this year, part about funds raised, but partly about awareness. So um, a lot of people don't really understand the history of the world's oldest basketball court. They don't know it's in St. Stephen. They've heard little bits about it. They might have saw it in the Globe and Mail. They might have saw it on CTV News. They might have saw it on C CHCO. But I, I, they didn't know the whole story. And, and we brought them here and told them the whole story yesterday. And I think they'll keep coming back. So it's partly it's to raise funds on an ongoing basis to help our operating budget of the world's oldest basketball court long term 
but a lot of it also is just awareness of how special of a project this is and they are going to help us amplify the message. Local sports personality Evan McFarlane was on the winning team alongside Harry, Justin and Roly Sapier and Jared Paul who took home the first ever Archie. The trophy itself will remain on display at the Algonquin until the tournament is played again next year. The golf tournament combined with an auction and gala dinner emceed by Maestro Fresh West at the Algonquin grossed over $75,000 in support of the world's oldest basketball court. The long-term goal for the court is to turn it into both a museum and experiential basketball attraction for fans of the sport of all ages from all over the world. Well, Evan, congrats on winning that tournament, but did uh -huh. Vicky refer to you as a local sports personality? Uh, that's when I know that we're starting to make it, Joe. I, I took that. She did say that in public as well, in front of everybody during the day. So, um, yeah, I, I had to play well if you get called that. But uh, props to uh, my partners, Harry Rowley and Justin Sapier and Jarrett Paul. I got kind of put in with them last minute. Uh, I don't know, man. Their, their putters were fire hazards that day. They were so hot that I, I didn't even go. know. There Look you are, that. the Larry O'Brien trophy. It's, it's amazing. Uh, yeah, no, such an incredible day and uh, really good things happening. I think that tournament's only going to get bigger. So I'll, uh, I'm pumped to forever be labeled to winning the first one ever. <laughs> yeah, that was, uh, that was quite an impressive, uh, impressive feat. And just overall, we took a visit down to the world's oldest basketball court, which once you get the description and everything and what their plans are, uh, Tom Liston and crew uh, just just did an amazing, amazing job there. Absolutely. All right, let's move on to the music spotlight. Um, I have three sets of friends who all just had summer babies. Um, so I was looking for something to parallel that. So this one goes out to Ali and Ian, Jess and Jeremy and Amanda and Jackie. And it's by a singer songwriter named Susie Ungerleader, who was born in Northampton, Mass, not far from me, but was raised and still lives in Vancouver, BC. And here she is with her song, Summer Baby. You were my summer baby, shining in the sun. Well, I guess you couldn't wait to smell the roses, my beauty little one. Twenty-nine, we'd wonder, born after the seventh month. You had my heart wrapped up in your tiny fingers as it wrapped around my thumb. Tuesday morning, a thousand balloons came floating around my room. Around my Coming up next, I interviewed some kids from our summer basketball camp in St. Andrews, and you won't want to miss their answers. You're watching Mick and T Sports Report on CHCO TV, and we'll take you to break with a song in memory of the late Olivia Newton John. Welcome back to Mick and T Sports Report on CHCO TV. While I was up in St. Andrews last month, we ran our basketball by the sea camp for the first time since 2019, and it was certainly a great time. And during the last day at camp, we had some fun with a few of the campers as we got them to answer some pressing questions of the day. So let's take a listen. We're here with Juliet, and we have a few questions to ask her. Juliet, what is your favorite type of Timbit? Um, probably sprinkles, like the rainbow sprinkled covered ones. Those are great. Have you ever tried a Dunkin' Munchkin? I don't think so, no. Those are from Dunkin' Donuts. Our favorite one is the tuna fish Munchkin. That's not a joke. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> they're, all, they're just like Timbits. Okay. Um, so I want you to look at the camera and say the following words. Dunkin' Donuts is better than Tim Hortons. Okay. Dunkin' Donuts is better than Tim Hortons. Shouldn't sound too convincing on that, but that's okay. All right. Uh, what is your favorite sport, basketball or hockey? Basketball. Good answer. Good answer. Do you know the first line of O Canada? 
O Canada. Do you know what's next? We stand on guard for thee. Okay. Do you know the first line of the Star Spangled Banner? No. Okay. Neither do I, so we're even there. Um, would you like Donald Trump to run for Prime Minister of Canada? No. Okay. Interesting. Would you like Justin Bieber to run for Prime Minister of Canada? No. Okay. All right. Tough, tough crowd here. All right. I want you to say, I'm going to spell a word, and I want you to just say the word. A-B-O-U-T. Abbott? Close. We were looking for a boot. Okay, but very close. Um, have you ever watched Mick and T's Sports Report on CHCO TV? No. Okay, you're pretty much like the rest of Charlotte County right there. And we'll finish you up with how many times each day do you think you say the word sorry? Five. Okay, that sounds very, very Canadian to me. Juliet, thank you very much. You can get back out on the court. Thanks. We're here with Declan, and we have a number of questions, so we'll get going. Declan, what is your favorite type of Timbit? Uh, probably have to go with the um, Beeb Timbits. Uh-oh, the Beeb Timbits. Have you ever tried a Dunkin' Munchkin? No. They have an awesome, I was telling the other girl, they have an awesome tuna fish sandwich. Tuna fish munchkin, actually, so. <laughs> I don't think I've ever actually had tuna. You've never had tuna? No. Okay, interesting. Uh, favorite sport, basketball or hockey? Uh, basketball. Good answer. Good answer. Say the first two lines of O Canada. O Canada. I forget. <laughs> oh. I haven't been in school. We always sing it the first morning, okay. but. Okay. <laughs> uh, do you know the first line of the Star Spangled Banner? No. Okay, neither do I, so we're sort of even there. Um, would you like Donald Trump to run for Prime Minister of Canada? No. Okay. Would you like Justin Bieber to run for Prime Minister of Canada? Also no. Okay, also no. Tough, tough political candidate. I'm going to spell a word, and I would like you to pronounce it. A-B-O-U-T. A bit. O. <laughs> That seems to be a tricky one. <laughs> we wanted you to say a boot. Oh. Okay, yeah, it's very Canadian. Um, have you ever watched Mick and T's Sports Report on CHCO? No. Okay, we still have yet to find a person on my entire trip that's watched it. But um, And lastly, how many times each day do you say the word sorry? Probably like once, twice. Okay, not very Canadian. You should be saying it very, like anytime something happens, it should be sorry. But all right, well, thank you very much, and uh, we'll get you on the air for that. Okay, thank you. All right, we're here with a huffing and puffing Mike. Mike, we have a bunch of questions for you. Your favorite type of Timbit? Uh, I'd say probably birthday cake. Birthday cake, that's an excellent choice. Have you ever tried a Dunkin' Munchkin? No, I haven't. Do you know what it is? No. It's the Dunkin' Donuts version of that, and they have a really good, like, tuna fish munchkin. No, I'm just kidding. It would not be that. Uh, favorite sport, basketball or hockey? Hockey, 100%. Okay, so then why are you at a basketball camp? Uh, my mom wanted to sign me up just because, so I could get active during the summer instead of sitting on my couch while playing video games all day. Okay, excellent. So we are a uh, replacement for video games. That's good. Maybe we'd like Justin Bieber to run for Prime Minister of Canada. I would love that. Okay. <laughs> that would be great. All right, I'm going to spell a word for you, and I want you to pronounce it. We've had some trouble, the first two people. A-B-O-U-T. About. Okay, we're getting close. We're looking a little more for, like, the about. Okay, yeah. Um, have you ever watched Mick and T's Sports Report on CHCO? No, I haven't. Okay, you're, everyone seems to have the same answer for that. It is really a show. I didn't make that up. And lastly, since you're Canadian, how many times each day do you think you say the word sorry? Uh, probably at least five. That's a very good answer. Mike, thank you very much. Thank you for having me. And we're here with Bella. And Bella, we have a number of questions for you. First up, what is your favorite type of Timbit? Um, birthday cake. That's the second person that said that. 
Have you ever tried a Dunkin' Munchkin? N no, I have never. Do you know what it is? Nope. Have you ever heard of Dunkin' Donuts? Yep. Okay, that's what they have. And we were telling the other people the best, it's sort of like a Timbit, but the best one that people like, it's a poutine munchkin. That sound, sound good? Mm, no. <laughs> I'm just kidding. There's very little poutine in the U.S. Favorite sport, basketball or hockey? Basketball. Good answer, good answer. Uh, we're going to ask a little political question, even though you're young. Would you like Donald Trump to run for Prime Minister of Canada? Yeah. That would be so fun. Okay. Yep, yep. Try it. We did it for four years. I don't remember the fun part of it. Uh, would you like Justin Bieber to run for Prime Minister of Canada? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That would be more fun. Yeah, it would. All right. I'm going to spell a word for you, and I want you to pronounce it. It's easy. A B O U T. About? It's getting there. We're looking for a little more of a boot. You know, a little Canadian accent there. All right, uh, two more questions. Have you ever watched Mick and T's Sports Report on CHCO TV? I don't think so, no. It is probably one of the higher quality shows you'll see on television. Um, that's what I've been told. And lastly, this is such a Canadian question. How many times a day do you think you say the word sorry? Like twice. Okay, you got to work on that. It should be more like seven or eight times a day. But thank you very much for coming on. Thank you for having me. And, and we're back, and that's awesome. I love the response from the kids. But, I mean, like, what is going on with none of these kids seeing our show? Like, they look as stumped as I do when you make me try to guess a TV show from 1960. It was pretty unique. I think they, they talked to each other before and said, let's all say that uh, none of us had uh, have ever seen the show before. Um, but yeah, that what, was, I've, what I've heard, I'm a, I'm a local TV personality now, so they must know who I am. <laughs> you are. We got maybe we'll have to show some cartoons or something like that. Or oh, TikTok. TikTok. We there we go. TikToks. There we go. But all right, then. Well, coming up next on Small Town Spotlight, we will visit with the Patrick Watt of Nova Scotia. You're watching the end of summer episode of Mick and T Sports Report on CHCO TV in St. Andrews. It's time for another edition of Small Town Spotlight here on Mick and T Sports Report. A quick reminder that our show airs on Monday and Friday nights at 8 p.m. Atlantic time and Thursdays at 7.30 p.m. anywhere in the world at chco.tv. Regionally on Channel 26 if you're watching over the air television and on various cable systems throughout the great country of Canada. And if you miss any of those airings, you can always check out the show on CHCO's YouTube channel. For this edition of Small Town Spotlight, we head just over three hours northeast of Halifax, Nova Scotia to Arishat, population 1961, rich in Acadian culture in the main village on Isle Madame, located on the southeastern tip of Cape Breton Island. To tell us more about life in the area, let's welcome in the station manager of Talil Community Television, Becky Tennyson. Becky, welcome to the show. Well, thank you very much for having me. All right, first, let's chat a little bit about the station. How long has the station been on the air and how long have you been the station manager? This station has been on the air for 28 years. Um, I've been the station manager for a little over a year, but before that I was the editor. I was the editor at the station. Okay, so and, how long uh, have you worked there total? Uh, four years. Okay. Yeah. Now, what type of shows do you air on the station and how many total do you guys produce in-house? Well, it's a mixed bag. I mean, we, we definitely... Um, local interest stories, you know, anything that, that comes up could be a lost dog or it could be um, a lady who won a flower competition or it could be, it's definitely music shows. We record a lot of musicians. Music is a very large part of life uh, in this area. You know, I think eight out of 10 people play music in this, in this little town. Uh, mm. So they're, yeah, it's quite a, it's quite rich in, 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 in that way. 
We also record, you know, uh, politics, council meetings, um, news stories, anything at all, really. It's kind of a mixed bag. Now, are there anyway. any any common shows that like that CHCO would show that are pre-produced that you would also show that that they do? The only thing that um, that we have been sharing, we've been sharing a, um, a series they're doing on journalism. Um, oh, yep. I'm very open to sharing shows. I can assure you of that. Anytime, anytime CHCO would send me something, I would probably air it, and um, I'm assuming they would do the same. So. We can, if there's, if you want a little bidding war, maybe we can see if our show wants to sort of cross into another province. Uh, I'm sure, sure. You break the bank on that bidding war. Um, well, you asked me about, you asked me about how many of the shows here are produced here, uh, 99% of them. Oh, okay, that's great. So I, we, we put about, we put out about three new shows a week. Okay, excellent. Now let's find out a bit about the area. Um, Arishat is located on Isle Madame. Is that how it's pronounced? Isle Madame, that's correct. Okay. What other villages are located on the Isle? Well, Isle Madame, first of all, Isle Madame is an island off the island of Cape Breton. It's a separate little island altogether, okay. separated by a causeway, a little tiny causeway called the Lennox Passage. Um, it's 17 square miles. That's how big Isle Madame is. And on Isle Madame, there are several different communities. There is a, a community, there's Arishat, of course. There is Descous, which is uh, the north side of the island. And it's primarily made up of, I would say, Scottish people. Then there is Rocky Bay, which is all Irish people. And there is Jamgrin's Island, they are Acadian. Uh, and Petit de Gras, very Acadian. Arishat is uh, also, again, you know, <laughs> it's everybody at once. <laughs> the, so all together on Isle Madame, there's, you know, there's probably, oh, 6,000 people maybe. Okay. Now let's say I had uh, 48 hours to spend in your area. First, what time of the year would you suggest to go and what things would I do while I was there? Well, depending on what you like, um, summer is a great time because we have a lot of water. And with water comes a lot of water sports, boating, whale watching, fishing, all of those. At, we have beaches, so, you know, swimming, all of those things, hiking trails, we have those. Um, if you were a person who enjoyed music, you would come in the, in the fall and uh, you would probably, you know, enjoy the, the Celtic music uh, scene because that's very large here in the fall along with the colors colors of the leaves changing on the trees it's quite a beautiful place so that's what I would be doing <laughs> yeah. now to piggyback on that tell me a bit about the Celtic music scene in your area Celtic music scene is very large in Cape Breton and because we are a part of Cape Breton of course we we are also a part of that but mostly in my little area it's all it's pretty much a uh, French French music Acadian uh, Acadian music. Uh, in the rest of Cape Breton, uh, the Scottish and Celtic, very, very, uh, very prominent. Um, even on Tell Ill, when we're playing our community scroll that we do all the time when there's no show playing, we uh, actually have a radio station that comes from the Gaelic College. So we, we uh, you know, we're airing that and broadcasting that all the time. So mm -hmm. Yeah, I, um, actually, on this segment um, a year or two ago, I did an interview with uh, uh, Alan from the Music Interpretive Center, and that's in Judique. That's Judique, about a, yeah, Al, Alan Dewar. Yep, and that's yep. about an hour from you? Yep. Okay. Now, what are the biggest employers in the area? Two biggest employers, and of course, it comes very naturally to me, to us, because we're a fishing village, would be premium seafoods. And um, well, three, three large ones, Premium Seafoods Clearwater has a lobster plant here. Premium Seafoods uh, plant is a, cra a, a queen crab. That's a crab plant. Okay. And then we have a boat builder who employs a large number of people and that's Samson Enterprises. And I'm gonna pop up some background photos of the area that are just absolutely heavenly to, to I'm looking across the water at that right now actually <laughs> uh, okay and yeah, these... that, that, that's our local yacht club okay we have a couple of them we have one that's that that yacht club is located in Capo, Capo Get, it's called and um it's just gorgeous over there just beautiful 
and there's sort of an overhead view of, uh, yeah. of some of the area there. And um, all right, now the other thing is on Small Town Spotlight, the segment, I always ask for a local restaurant recommendation. So give me your favorite. The Groundswell. Okay. And that's connected to uh, like a bed that's on, hotel or? That, 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 the Groundswell is actually on Isle Madame. And it, um, it is a little inn on the north side of the island in the Discus section. Um, it also uh, has a yacht club on that side of the island, which is a little less uh, yacht and more fishing boat or pleasure, pleasure craft, as we should say. Uh, the Groundswell has, it's an inn and it has like theme rooms, uh, I think for the Beatles, actually. Like, okay. you know, okay. Eddie Road and yep. Yeah, yeah. And there's some of their- Yeah, yep. Yeah scallops and uh looks yeah. like scallops and mussels and always fresh <laughs> always fresh not uh not the frozen ones we uh, don't do we don't do frozen <laughs> no. uh, we don't have to right <laughs> no no not at all no. um well the website for the station is talil.tv which yep. we will also post on the screen for our viewers so check it out to see some of their shows and some other info about the area. She's Becky Tennyson, station manager of Talil Community TV. And Becky, if you ever want to take the six-hour drive to Yarmouth, Nova Scotia, then a four-hour ferry to Bar Harbor, Maine, and then hop in for another seven-hour drive to New Haven, Connecticut, I'll make it worth your while by treating you to some of our world famous thin crust pizza maybe you can film it all for a future tv show on this. <laughs> you never know. <laughs> never know well thank you so much for telling us about the area and hopefully our viewers will take a look at it and when they are looking for somewhere to go we'll take a trip out your way this is a great place to come everybody's really friendly and they'll help you out wherever you're whenever you pull over on the side of the road somebody will tell you which which direction you should be going in Great. Thanks for being on the show and continued good luck with the station. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. All right. Just another great small town interview there that you did, Joe. It's awesome. Uh, those are amazing. But when did you actually get a chance to sit in uh, St. Andrew's Brew Co? And what is that? Yeah, I was very observant. I was wearing a St. Andrew's Brewing Company t-shirt. Um, which is sort of ironic because I don't drink at all, but uh, right. I'm a t-shirt connoisseur. And when I was down there, I got a few uh, uh, glasses to bring back to friends and they had some neat t-shirts. And that, that's just a great place to hang out. Awesome. I got to get one of those shirts actually. <laughs> Definitely. And you know, any local businesses that would also like to send along some swag, there. We'll happily uh, we'll promote you in the show. And uh, I'm looking at you, honey beans and, you char and chowder or um brad at kingsbury garden uh, anyone that wants to send some stuff up we'll wear it <laughs> awesome so i guess it's, uh, it's probably that time where we're gonna wrap things up for this episode eh? so uh i know we've mentioned this guy a bunch of times uh probably in three or four episodes now but i think we have to just give a shout out to tom list and his group for what they did with that basketball tournament i don't think a lot of people realize the spin-off that is going to come from this event and how successful that day was like we only see it getting bigger tom puts a ton of work into this and uh, his crew did such an amazing job that day and everything flowed so perfectly uh i see this event being massive next year it was uh i mean really just a, a high level top-notch event from from soup to nuts as they say and they yeah. they, they just did a great job on it but um all right well that is the end of season three episode 42 of Mick and T Sports Report. I'm Joe in New Haven. And I'm Evan. We'll see you in season four, hopefully. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thanks to editor Florence Mitchell and CHCO TV station manager Patrick Swayze Watt. Uh, Patrick and Florence do a great job of producing and editing a show that's often more popular than a Thursday night dance party at the Red Herring Pub. Yeah, cool. that for local local accent there <laughs> and now that we've once again come to the end of the show and another season we'll leave you with peace love and more parties at evan's house ah. this is mick and t sports report on chco tv we'll see you next time <laughs>